God, right? Are we sitting in the presence of God? Amen. Do you believe that we are in the presence of God? Yes. If then the Lord has something to speak to us. Hallelujah. As the people are celebrating the Pam Sunday or the Passion Week or something. So we are sitting in the presence of God. And I, uh, I know that uh, some of our families are traveling and uh, uh, some of our families are not feeling well. So they are not... Uh, able to come in person and also um, some are absent but uh, some of them are in Zoom. So we will be praying for all those people and uh, we will be praying for all the people those who are traveling and uh, uh, we will bring everything in the mighty hand of God and this morning uh, you know I was uh, uh, thinking about uh, talking about Alvin uh, talking about um, uh, the triumphal entry of Jesus to Jerusalem the triumphal entry of Jesus to Jerusalem from Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 to 11 okay so I request everyone to open your Bible am I audible to everyone or should I use the another mic no this is okay okay so listen so we will be discussing and we will be uh, uh, studying or learning something uh, out of that chapter maybe Matthew chapter 21 uh, verses 1 to 11 so you now it says the triumphal entry of Jesus to Jerusalem. You know we know that as this week is pre and, and uh, is the is the previous week of Easter, and uh, I thought to preach something about the topic. That's the reason that I I picked up this uh, I mean uh, portion to preach about. And uh, we know that the for uh, for the traditional uh, churches and uh, uh, maybe the the other churches, the mainland churches, they are for today uh, is the Pam Sunday for them and uh, the Hosanna Sunday, and uh, the next Sunday is the. Easter Sunday for uh, them. Uh, at the same time, this whole week is uh, known as the Holy Week or the Passion Week, right? And uh, they are celebrating uh, this whole week uh, with all the traditional uh, observations and traditional uh, ritualistic uh, way of uh, celebrating the celebrations and the feasts and festivals. So that they are doing according to the uh, religious understanding of those people that they are always doing all those things. But usually the, the Pentecostal people or the evangelical people or the born again uh, uh, Christians uh, usually they don't uh, give more uh, importance in celebrating uh, all these so called uh, uh, celebrations. Uh, there is a reason for that also you know there is nothing that we are celebrating this feast or festival or something but the thing is um, uh, when we compare with the Bible and also with the history of uh, uh, the, the Christianity, we understand uh, many of the terms that used in the in the uh, Christian festivals are not uh, uh, from are not coming from the Christianity or from the Bible or the Christian uh, history, but that has the root in the in the uh, uh, pagan uh, religions. So that's the reason that uh, most of the Christians or uh, most of the Pentecostals or evangelical churches or born again groups of the people they are not celebrating all those things because they understand uh, the Bible or the apostles. Uh, in the New Testament, they are not giving more importance for the ritualistic celebration of these feasts or festivals or celebrations. Okay, but we are looking into the heart of the festival and we are coming uh, near to understand what is the spiritual meaning and we are trying to, I mean, uh, celebrate those celebrations in a spiritual way. In a spiritual way. Okay, for example, you know, every every uh, Christian festivals that the people are celebrating today, they have different backgrounds and they have different, uh, what you can say, uh, uh, those I mean, festivals are connected to the uh, pagan, uh, uh, the terms are connected to the uh, pagan worship or pagan uh, worship system or their uh, cultural understanding about the religion. But we understand, you know, especially, especially uh, for example, you can think about the, the, the Christmas. Okay, or the uh, what is that? Uh, the 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 Christmas uh, Papa, Christmas uh, uh, um, Santa, Santa Claus, or uh, the Easter, all those things. No, so think about all those things. The background of all those things, you will understand. The real root is in the pagan religion. 
you know, as, as we are the Christians, we are not looking for that. But sometimes to compete with all those people or also to compromise with all the religions, we people are sometimes celebrating all these things in a different way. You know, for example, we are celebrating sometimes uh, uh, the Christmas and we are celebrating the Easter sometimes. And also, um, uh, we are celebrating uh, some other festivals of uh, the Christianity. At the same time, we don't understand what is the real meaning of that. We don't understand the real meaning of that. So we know that this week is the Passion Week or uh, uh, what is that? The, the, the Palm Sunday today and the next Sunday is the Easter Sunday. We know that. At the same time, most of the time, the people of God are not understanding what is the real meaning of those things. Now, for example, the Christmas and the Easter is coming out of the, the pagan uh, history. No, that term is coming from there. But when we are celebrating Christmas, we are not celebrating that as a ritualistic way. Right? We are not celebrating in a traditional way, but celebrating that, including or uh, knowing the real meaning of that celebration okay in the old testament we understand the jewish people they had almost seven feasts to uh, celebrate time to time okay just like uh, the the feast of passover you know jesus was talking about that the feast of passover the feast of uh, pentecost okay the feast of uh, a tabernacle or feast of a trumpet or something. So those people, the Old Testament people, they were always eager to, uh, eagerly waiting for the celebration. They were waiting for the festival to come, and they were always celebrating those festivals every every time. Okay. But in the New Testament, when we when we think about the New Testament history, we understand the New Testament or the the apostles in the New Testament. They never promote the celebration of all those things. But they are always remembering us or reminding the, the believers that you have to remember something and you have to celebrate in a spiritual way. For example, we are celebrating the death of Jesus Christ. We are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ in a different way. In a different way. You know, the, the, the traditional people... The traditional Christian people, the mainland churches, they are, I mean, they are observing all those things and they are celebrating the Christmas or Easter or any other things, you know, Thanksgiving or uh, you know, Halloween, something. But they are, I mean, they are celebrating all those things in a different way and they are saying, okay, this is a traditional thing or cultural thing and we have to celebrate this. But the, the, but the people of God, those who are I mean, washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, and as we are the born again Christian, we are not celebrating all those things in that way, but we are trying to understand what is the need of the death of Jesus Christ, what is the need of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and we are worshipping God, and we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, when we are conducting the Holy Communion, what we are doing? Jesus said it. What Jesus said? Remember. Jesus said, remember me when you are taking the cup, when you are drinking from the, from the, from the cup, or when you are I mean, I, I mean, eating the bread, you remember me. Do it in my remembrance, right? Do it in my remembrance. What is the meaning of that? Jesus said, and you have to remember something when you are doing that. Okay? Unless and until we are known about the reality, the real, I mean, spiritual meaning of the celebration, if you are celebrating or if you are, I mean, what is that? Akushikya. So when we are, I mean, uh, celebrating those festivals or something, there is no meaning at all. But we are coming to the point that we are trying to understand what is the real meaning of the festivals in Christendom and Christianity. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, uh, sometimes uh, uh, we do celebrate the, 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 some kind of uh, celebration uh, just for the entertainment of our children, right? Hmm? Just for entertainment of the children. We are doing that. There is nothing wrong in that, doing that. At the same time, understand, for example, you know, next Sunday is the Easter Sunday, right? So, you are arranging something for the children to, what is that, the, the egg hunting or something? Let it be, no problem. Let it be, no problem. Okay, let it happen. So, we had the gift, ex gift exchanging program for the Christmas. Right? Okay, we are conducting that, not for the traditional, uh, what is that, the celebration or something, but just for entertaining the children or the other people, right? 
just for a just for a joke, just for a fun. But at the same time, my question is: Are we giving a different or wrong message into the heart of those children? This is the question. Sometimes, when the Christians are celebrating some festivals, sometimes you know we are giving a wrong message to the children, and they are thinking, "Oh, this is Thanksgiving. Oh, this is the Easter." Oh, hunting, you know, egg hunting is the Easter. They, they believe that egg hunting is the Easter. No, it's not like that. You know, sometimes that happens. But this morning, I would like to tell you that when we are celebrating something, we are not celebrating in a traditional way or in that way, the religious way. But we are always celebrating just for an entertainment for the children. At the same time, knowing the real meaning of the festival. Hallelujah. Amen. And again, the Thanksgiving. Why we are celebrating Thanksgiving? We are using that occasion to thank God for everything that we have received. We are celebrating. We are going for the Christmas carol. For what we are going for that? Are we going for a okay, Christmas carol with the, uh, what is that, Christmas papa or uh, the Santa Claus or something? Oh, it's a, it's a great thing. No, it's not like that. We are doing that with the purpose that through that celebration, we can propagate the gospel. We can spread the gospel. We can share the gospel to the other people, the unreached people. When, when we are having the Thanksgiving celebration, we are thanking God. If the other people are there, if the unbelievers are there, if the unreached people are there, I mean families are there in that meeting, they will also know that the Lord is good for the people of God. And God has done many blessings upon the people of God. And they are worshipping God. And they are praising the name of the Lord. And we also should be a part of that. I mean, so this is the reason that we are worshipping all those things. As I told you that this whole week is known as the Holy Week or a Passion Week. Okay, so think about the Bible and study from that chapter especially from Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 to 11. You know, you can see that in four Gospels, not only in Matthew, in four Gospels about each day is mentioned. Okay, we'll come to that. Yeah, yeah next step. You know, there are many things which is happening in this Passion Week. Okay? This is known as the Passion Week or uh, the Palm Sunday and the Passion Week, Passover Day and everything is there. Okay, so many things are happening in this one week, that means Sunday to Sunday, eight days. Okay, there are many things happening in this week related to Jesus Christ. You will, you will get an idea from there. Now, every day, the traditional people are, are, are celebrating each thing. Okay, so I am not sure about, uh, you know, these all things are happening every day. I mean, next day, next day, next day. I am not sure about that because I didn't see in that way in the Bible. But at the same time, the traditional people, the Christians, are they are worshipping and they are celebrating all these things every day. Okay, this is the list. And you can see there, maybe uh, in Matthew chapter 21 to 28 and Mark chapter 11 to 16 chapters and uh, Luke chapter 19 to 24 chapters and John uh, chapters 12 to 20. All these chapters are mentioning about every day what is happening with Jesus Christ. Okay, What is happening related to Jesus Christ, the events which is happening at that way. <clears throat> Especially on Sunday. Okay, Triumphal entry to Jerusalem on donkey. Monday, Jesus cleansing the temple. Tuesday, Jesus goes to the Mount of Olives. Wednesday, resting in Bethany before Passover. No, this is not sure. Okay, on Wednesday, that uh, what Jesus did, it is not written in the Bible. You know, in, in that, in the particular day, nothing is mentioned in the Bible. But the scholars are saying that on that day, Jesus was resting and in Bethany before Passover. Because the next day, the Thursday is the Passover day and the Lord's Supper is happening. So, be, just before the, the previous day of Thursday, Wednesday, I mean, Jesus was resting in Bethany. And on Friday, crucifixion, death, burial, and the people are celebrating this Friday as the Good Friday. Okay, so we will also will be having a, a, a day of prayer or a special meeting on Good, Good Friday, this Friday. And that will be, I mean, through Zoom. And we will be arranging someone to preach on that day for that Good, uh, uh, good Friday. Okay, so that is going to happen on Friday. And Saturday, 
Saturday, the body of Jesus inside the tomb and Sunday is the resurrection Sunday. Okay, so these are the things which is happening in one week related to Jesus and many other events are happening there but I would like to uh, take maybe one or two incidents or one or two events which happen in this week related to Jesus Christ. We have no time to explain all those things which is happening I mean, I mean in between these chapters. Okay, there are a lot of things which is written in the Bible, but I'm just picking maybe one or two events or incidents from the life of Jesus Christ. Listen, the main character of this portion or this week events is none other than Jesus Christ. Amen? So the people are celebrating these all things and people are celebrating these events of Jesus Christ only because only Jesus is the important person in this event. Okay, so Jesus is the important person, and so Friday we will be I mean, focusing on the crucifixion and death of Jesus Christ, and Sunday we will focus on resurrection of Jesus Christ. But today we are focusing or trying to cover some of the important events or incidents that happened in the life of Jesus in between the Palm Sunday or the resurrection Sunday. Okay, so. Many are uh, there to, to pick up from that those portion, but we will be looking into maybe uh, one or two uh, uh, events and we will try to co uh, correlate with uh, our spiritual life. And uh, we know that, you know, the religious people are always celebrating all these, uh, I mean, festivals, uh, but we will be, we will not be celebrating in that way, but we are trying to understand, I mean, what the Lord has to tell us, I mean, on, on every occasion. You know, the Lord has something to tell us and there is a message for every one of us to receive from the Lord when we are celebrating something. Okay, so when we, when somebody is celebrating the death of Jesus Christ and there, there is a message, right? And when somebody is uh, uh, celebrating, you know, Easter, the Easter is, uh, actually Easter is, the word Easter is coming from the pagan background, okay? So we are not supposed to use that word, but we will still use that word to, to indicate that the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay, that's it. Okay, so the resurrection of Jesus Christ, so when the people are uh, celebrating the Easter or when the people are celebrating the, uh, I mean, resurrection of Jesus Christ, there is a message for the people. Because the people can understand, the people can experience the power of the resurrection in their life. That we will, I mean, we will, I mean, I mean, I'll be preaching about uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the power of the Jesus Christ, power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ on the, the coming Sunday. Okay, so we have to understand there is a message for every one of us and God was keeping something in his mind when he was mentioning, when he was recording all these events in the Bible, that you and me will be reading this portion, that you and me will be going through this portion and preaching, the God, preaching this portion any one day. Okay, so God was keeping that in his mind and saying that, okay, this is going to happen, so let the people of God get the real message of the Festivals. Okay, so I would like to, I mean, give you some of the uh, lessons from uh, uh, this, uh, this maybe this events. Okay, so every event which is related to Jesus Christ has a lesson. Has a lesson. So let us uh, first of all let us go to Matthew chapter twenty-one verses one to eleven. Uh, one of you can uh, read that portion uh, very clearly so that uh, the everybody can uh, listen into this. Chapter twenty-one verses one to eleven. Yeah. <coughs> her coat by her, mm. untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken throughout the prophet, mm. through the prophet. <coughs> say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt and a foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed her cloaks on, the, on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. 
The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Amen. So here we see that the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem before his crucifixion. Okay, so the crucifixion is coming afterwards and the resurrection is coming afterwards. But now we understand Jesus Christ was entering into Jerusalem. When, so that is known as the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. Here we read that Jesus is sending two disciples to the opposite village. And also he said, you will find a donkey and a colt tied there and go there and untie them, bring them to me. Okay? If anyone say anything, the Lord has need of them. Remember, when Jesus was giving these instructions to the disciples, Jesus said, you go to the opposite village. And you will see there, there is a donkey, there is a colt and you will untie them. Okay, it is, it is, it is there and it is binded and it is there uh, with, a, with a tie and you will just untie them and bring it them to, to me and I need them. And if somebody is asking that, uh, uh, that uh, I mean, uh, why you are just I mean, taking this I mean, a donkey and all these uh, things and you have to answer him that the Lord has needed it. The Lord has needed it. So we are coming to the point you know, when we think about the Christian life, when we think about our personal life, you know, once we were not in the presence of God, once we were not living according to the word of God, we were tied with many other world and worldly things and everything. But the Lord said that I am sending somebody to you. You know, some pastors or some evangelists, they came to us and maybe the word of God came to us and we, we were reading that portion and we became the Christians or we became the people of God, we became the believers or born again people. Right? So that is the reason that God was sending somebody to someone. Here we can see that his disciples were sent by Jesus Christ and disciples are going to that opposite village and they were bringing that donkey. Okay, just like that, we are also coming to the presence of God and we became the children of God. And we are the useful vessel in the hands of God now. And again, we read there, I mean, uh, you know, uh, what is that? Uh, 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 when, when the donkey was tied, I mean, it was not having a freedom, right? It was not having a freedom. But then after coming to Jesus Christ, it says that I'm so free now. I have no bondages now. I was in a captivity. I was in a bondage and I was not able to do anything. But I am free now. Listen, you know, when we come to the presence of God, when we accept Jesus as personal Savior, here we read that, now Jesus is sitting on the donkey and Jesus is riding the donkey, right? Okay, Jesus is sitting on the donkey and Jesus is riding over the donkey. That's the same thing which is happening in our life also. You know, when we come to Christ and when we accept Jesus as a personal savior, you know, we got the freedom. Now we are having the presence of God on us and Jesus is riding over us, right? Jesus is controlling us. Amen. Jesus is sitting on us and Jesus is riding over us. And why this happened? In Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9, it is very clearly written that this is going to happen in the life of Jesus Christ. This is going to happen in the life of Jesus Christ. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9. Let's read that verse. Yeah. This is a prophetical word about uh, Jesus Christ in Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Mm. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you. I'll be, I'll be. Next. Okay. Holy and mm. riding on a donkey. Ah. On a cord. The fowl of a donkey. Okay, so this is happening only because it was already prophesied by the prophet of Zechariah. 
he prophesied that this is going to happen for a person that that is the Jesus Christ okay again in Matthew chapter 21 verses 8 and 9 we read that many things are happening there most of the crowd spread their cords in the road and others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them in the road and the crowds going ahead of him and those who followed were shouting Hosanna to the son of David blessed is the who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest hallelujah you know when you read that portion we understand that in those days the kings used to travel on uh, the, the, the kings used to travel on the horses when they were going for a war Okay. The kings were traveling on a horse when they were going for a war or a, or a battle. At the same time, the kings are traveling on a donkey when, we are, when they are going for in, in peace. Okay, and we have to understand one thing that, you know, when the, the, the kings were anointed as a king or appointed as a king, these things are happening there in the, in the Jewish, uh, Jewish uh, I mean, community. You know, they used to spread their garments on the road and, I mean, at the feet also and at the feet of the king also. And that is the sign of their subjection to the king. I mean, so when they are showing that subjection to the king, the people used to spread their garments on the road or at the at the feet of the king and also they are taking the branches of the trees and spreading over the road okay just to honor that king and also to understand that they are subjected to the king so they, the king is appointed especially in the second kings chapter 9 verse 13 you will read about um, i mean jehu Men Jehu and also Solomon, you know, all those people were uh, becoming the kings and they were anointed or appointed as the kings. Okay, and when they were uh, I mean, appointed as the king, and these things are happening in, in second, second Kings chapter 9, verse 13. So that was the usual practice of the Jewish people in those days that they used to do all these things and they are shouting before before the king and saying that this this he is the king of our country and he is anointed or he is appointed as a king for us and they are praising him so that's the meaning of that you know when uh, we read about hosanna 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 uh, the, the, the 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 simple meaning of that word hosanna is save S A V is save okay at the same time the people of israel the, the jewish people they used to they used to i mean uh, i use this word in, in in hebrew language they used to use this here i mean word hosanna to pray for praising god for praising god hosanna means praising god because he has saved us okay so god has saved us from all kinds of these problems you know we know that uh, when they are uh, i mean uh, uh, the uh, they, when they are celebrating the people of israel they, when they are celebrating the 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 feast of passover the feast of passover we know that there is a reason for that there is a reason for that why why they are uh, i mean celebrating the feast of passover because they were uh, they were under the bondage of Egypt. Okay? We are not the same as the other one. We are not the same as the other one. Okay? So while they were in bondage, there was no freedom. Now they are saying, we got freedom. We are free now. And the Lord has delivered us from the, from, from the hands of Pharaoh and from the Egypt. And we are in the land of Canaan and we are worshipping God. We are worshipping God. Okay, so that is the reason that they are saying Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Here also you can say that as a sign of victory and as a sign of joy, the people are shouting Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. But we read in John chapter John chapter, I mean uh, uh, what is that, verse 19 yeah, in, in John uh, sorry, in Luke, Luke chapter 19 also it is written about all these, I mean, all these uh, events. Okay, there we read that in the, peop the, the, the Pharisees were rebuking Jesus and rebuking uh, the disciples, those who were shouting. Okay, the people were shouting, but the, the Pharisees were saying, no, 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 no need to shout. I and mean, why you are disturb disturbing us? Why you are, I mean, I mean uh, uh, shouting now? And uh, they said to, I mean, Jesus, I mean, tell them not to shout. Tell them not to disturb us. But Jesus said, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, let me tell you one thing. If you are keeping quiet, the stones, the organ or the instruments which is here, Amen. they will shout. Hallelujah. But if you are shouting for the Lord, that is a blessing for you. Hallelujah. 
Can you shout for the joy? Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we are supposed to shout for the Lord. We are supposed to shout for the Lord. It's not simply coming here and sitting there I mean, silently, no, shouting God. I mean, I mean, explaining about the presence of God, explaining about the praises unto the Lord and giving thanks unto the Lord for all the blessings that we receive from the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's the reason that here we can see that the people were shouting and saying, Hosanna, saying, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Again, when you think about that particular I mean demonstration. Okay, so Jesus was demonstrating. You know, uh, in, this is a, this is the only place that Jesus was doing this demonstration. No, sitting on a donkey, donkey, and uh, I mean sitting just like a king and coming to the Jerusalem. And this is the only, only thing, only I mean time that uh, Jesus was trying to demonstrate himself. And the other, all the other places, you will understand that whenever he is doing a miracle, he says to the people, what? Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Okay? Don't tell anyone. No, I am doing this secretly. Don't tell anyone. Okay? So everywhere it is like that. And he don't want to, the, to come to the public. And he don't want to uh, become a public figure. Eh? He don't want to come, come to the public scene. And he was always, I mean, I mean, going away, getting away from those I mean, incidents and saying that, don't tell to anybody. But here, what happens? Jesus himself is saying to the disciples, you go to the opposite village and you bring the donkey. What's the reason for that? What's the reason for that? When God was, God was planning something to do for the people of Israel and for the people, those who were believing in Jesus Christ, that is the reason that Jesus said, you go and get those donkeys. Amen. So God is purpose. God has a purpose, and God has a plan about every person. And God has a purpose that I mean, God can use you and me in the hands of God as a as a useful vessel. That's the reason that Jesus is calling the people. Jesus is calling and and telling them to bring those things. And also, the reason was that it was already written in the prophetical books. It was already in the Zechariah. Okay, in some other places also, it is written that this is going to happen. And also, he was trying to prove that he is the king of kings. Amen. If, he, if he is not doing that, then there is no proof. Okay, now, elsewhere we see that Jesus is getting away from all those things. And he is not I mean, telling anybody to uh, I mean, uh, promote this or he is not telling uh, anybody to I mean, demonstrate all these things then. But now Jesus said, no, 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 I'm going to send you to bring the donkeys. And I need that and I'm going to prove that I am the king of kings. Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning, whom we are worshipping? The king of kings and the lord of lords. When we are celebrating these things, we have to understand our lord is the king of kings and our lord is the lord of lords. Hallelujah. And another thing which we have to just notice from there is... The change of the character of the crowd, okay, or the attitude is, is entirely different. You know, the people, the crowd is there from, from different background. The people are from different background or from uh, the, the surrounding villages, maybe uh, from Badani or Gale, I mean, Galilee or some other, I mean, nearest, uh, I mean, villages of the Jerusalem. There are many people gathered there. But understand, these people are from different background. Different, uh, I mean, cultural background and different uh, experiences they have. They are all are coming together for the Passover feast. Okay, they are coming there for the Passover feast. Okay, so as these people are there, we understand that here, especially it is written that the same people, those who were shouting Hosanna, 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 now they change their attitude and now they are saying, crucify him, crucify him. Crucify him. Read uh, maybe Luke chapter 19 verse 37. Luke chapter 19 verse 37. <clears throat> when he came near the place ah. where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, hmm. the whole crowd of disciples began <laughs> joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Amen. What is that? You know, there are many people gathered there for the feast. At the same time, some of the people are shouting, shouting, shouting and they are saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna and praising God's name, praising Jesus' name. 
Amen. At the same time, after few time, after few hours, but we see that the same people are saying and shouting and crying, what? Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Listen very carefully. You know, the people are like that. <clears throat> The crowd is like that. Always, they need something. Then after getting all things, they change their attitude. Okay? After getting all things, and I, if they are full, and if everything is okay, then they are changing their attitude, and they are saying, now crucify Jesus. We don't want Jesus now. Well, this is the action. This is the attitude of the people, and it is like that only. But we have to understand one thing. Why the Lord has called you and me? have many things to share from the from the next portion also maybe chapter 21 verses 12 to 16 also the next one the cleansing of the of the temple but we don't have time to do that but understand one thing you know god has a plan and purpose about every person and when we are subjected when we are submitted in the hands of god god is able to use us together I mean, and God is there to use us, but we have to be submitted in the hands of God. No, here we understand that the attitude of the people are changed now. You no, know, when you know, sometimes you know, when we are uh, getting a miracle or when we are getting a healing or when we, when we are getting a, a a blessing that we are coming to the church and we are praising God and I mean uh, singing songs and worshiping God and uh, telling others that okay, I got this and I got that. I am praising God. You also, I mean, clap with me and you also praise the name of the Lord. But at the same time, sometimes we are crucifying Jesus Christ with our words and with our deeds. Many times, many times. Sometimes, you know, we are worshipping God. We are lifting the hands and, and, and praising God. And we are saying, I got this miracle. I mean, I got this healing. And I got this blessing. And God has blessed me for this and that. But sometimes we are crucifying Jesus Christ in many ways. But this morning, but the Bible says that when, when Jesus was, I mean, gathering all these people... I mean, you can understand that 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 particular gathering is known as the I mean ragtag procession. It was a ragtag procession means they, it was not well arranged before. You know, Jesus did not arrange anything there. You know, Jesus did not say, okay, these people can stand here when I am I mean I'm I'm riding on the donkey. I mean, these people can stand here and these people can stand here and you have to do something. You have to shout. You have to shout. And did, Jesus did not arrange anything. Jesus did not arrange anything. The people from different places, the people from different villages, they have gathered there and they are together shouting to the Lord because they are from different backgrounds. Okay? At the same time, in this procession, we have to understand Jesus, when he was I mean, going and entering into the Jerusalem city, I mean, many of the people were astonished. And many of the people were saying, no, 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 this is not, not our king. And Jesus is not our king. And he cannot come like this. I mean, but they were just I mean, rebuking the disciples. They were just rebuking Jesus and saying, no, this should not happen in our, in, in, in our city. But we understand that it was the plan of God. It was the purpose of God that Jesus was coming to that city with a plan and with a purpose. So let us all submit us with the mighty hand of God this morning also. Let's all close our eyes in the presence of God. Shall we all stand together in the presence of God and let us pray together. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray the Lord. Oh Lord, as the people are I mean, worshipping and as the people are I mean, celebrating a, 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 a particular week as a Passion Week or Palm Sunday or Easter Sunday, oh Lord, we are committing ourselves to the Lord. Lord, in the presence of God. This morning, let us come to the presence of God with a prayerful attitude. Hallelujah. Many times, we are not able to shout for the Lord. We are not remembering what the Lord has done for us. Many times, we are not remembering what the miracle is done for us. Many times, we don't understand what the Lord has done for us. Many times, we receive the miracles we are getting the blessings from the Lord, but at the same time, most of the time, we just forget it, and we are just I mean, trying to crucify Jesus with our words and with our deeds. But this morning, the Bible very clearly says that as the people are celebrating this week as a Passion Week, or as a, I mean, as a Palm Sunday or Easter Sunday, whatever it may be, I mean, let us understand what is the real meaning of the death of Jesus Christ. Let's understand what is the real meaning of the Holy Communion. Let's understand what is the real meaning of the Passover feast. Hallelujah. Let's remember I mean, how we came to this thus far. 
Let us remember I mean, how the Lord has delivered us from the bondages of Satan and sin and the world. Hallelujah. We know that once we were under the bondage of sin, right? Once we were under the bondage of sin. Once we were under the I mean, clutches of the sin and the Satan and the world. But this is the right time that the Lord has I mean, called us. His children, His saints of God, and we got the freedom today. So let us all worship the Lord for a while. I mean, for giving all these blessings upon every one of us. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Give thanks unto the Lord. I mean, say Hosanna, Hallelujah. Hosanna, Hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise the name of God. Hallelujah. 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 We we'll bless the name of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning as we are gathering together in the presence of God. Let me, one, I mean, let you, let me I mean, tell you one thing. Hallelujah. Once we were tied with the world. But now we are untied. We are untied. Remember, we are untied now. And we are free now. Hallelujah. But still under the yoke of Jesus Christ. We are still under the yoke of Jesus Christ. Man, we are untied with a purpose. That God has a purpose about your life and my life. That God has a purpose to do something. God has a purpose to I mean, use you and me for the glory of the name of the Lord. For the expansion of the kingdom of God. Remember, Jesus is there on us. When we have Jesus on us now. Let us be subjected to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Remember, He is riding us into the victory. Remember, let us not crucify him again. Many a times we are praising God. We are glorifying the name of the Lord. At the same time, with our deeds and with our words, we are crucifying Jesus Christ. Let that not happen in our Christian life. Let us shout Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So let us all bring us with the mighty hand of God. Let us pray together for the blessing upon every one of us in the coming days also. Hallelujah. As we are gathering on, on, on Friday for the Good Friday meeting and on Sunday for the Resurrection Sunday let us all pray that oh Lord let everything be a great blessing for all of us oh God. Help us to be used in the hands of God for the glory of the Lord in the coming days oh Lord. Hallelujah. Let us all bring us with the mighty hand of God. I request the Brother Reggie to lead us in prayer now. Amen. According to the word of God which you heard this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you Master.